So here's the question. Can the pain of parental neglect and abuse be switched off? If you've had it constantly drummed into you that you are bad, unlikable, not worthy of love for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, if you've never understood why or gotten an acceptance or apology from the family members who wounded you so deeply, can those memories, the pain, the fears, the thoughts be switched off? Hi, this is Adewale Ademiwa from StressTherapist.net and welcome to today's edition of the Take Back Control Snippets. If you're an employee, a student, a father or a mother and your anxiety, your depression and high stress levels keep shattering your efforts to enjoy and move forward in your job and your relationships, this show will give you the keys to unlock your life and take back the territory those emotions have stolen from you. So back to the question, can the pain of neglect, parental neglect and abuse be switched off? Well, my answer is yes, sort of. And by that I mean, you will still have the thoughts, you will still have the memories, but you can get to a point where the pain associated with those thoughts and memories don't exist anymore. I'll start with this context. So one of my clients, I'll call her Mary. She was telling me about how frustrated she was feeling with herself for allowing the things in her past to affect her now. As a child, she felt unfairly treated and singled out for no reason. Her dad was an angry man who blamed her for everything. And that will punish her for being too quiet, for doing something wrong, even for just walking into the room. He made her feel like he wished she'd never been born. And, and naturally, this made her feel dead inside. She felt hurt that she was never good enough. Sadly, her mom colluded with her dad in this negative treatment. So Mary just couldn't understand how mom could see her in so much pain and yet do nothing about it. But what was most painful for Mary about this was that whilst they were treating her this badly, her parents were constantly showering love and affection on her brother and sister, older brother and sister, was like they could do nothing wrong. Now, as an adult, Mary felt really, really frustrated because she was the only one in her family still carrying the pain around. Her mom and dad were happy. Her brother and sister were happy. Whilst for her, the experiences that she suffered as a child and is still having to suffer as an adult. Perhaps you can relate with Mary. I mean, if you find you're carrying all those past experiences around and it makes you feel like people don't like you, people don't want you by default. And if anything anybody does that seems remotely similar to something your parents do or your siblings do um, suddenly hits, makes you be, be bombarded with a barrage of emotions. If you can relate with any of that, then I'd like to leave you with some tips to help you break free of the cycle. So my first tip is to use the opportunity you now have as an adult to validate and love the child in you. Remember that the way children analyze things is completely different to the way an adult will process it. And what this means is that all that analysis you made as a child is locked in using childlike thinking. If you don't take this into consideration, you use an adult way of thinking to totally undermine, invalidate and demean the child, the way the child you were back then felt. This will make you feel even more wounded and misunderstood, meaning that you are continuing the cycle of neglect and abuse that was done to you on yourself. And naturally, that will make it 10 times harder to heal. So instead, try to bring yourself to acknowledge the pain. It's normal to feel that pain. And the truth is that no one has really sat down with you to show you how to deal with that pain. You've just been doing it by yourself, trial and error, hoping for the best. So now is the opportunity to learn how to cope and break free from that pain. Moving on to the second tip. 
Tip number two is to become skilled at spotting the positive coping addictions that's keeping your pain alive. You see, many people develop an addiction as a way of coping with their pain. In the same way, you might have picked up a lot of positive coping strategies which you've relied heavily on as a way of getting through the struggle of your life. Perhaps you've gotten good at becoming numb to pain. You block away emotions. You learn to block away thoughts. You, you become busy and use that as a distraction from any painful memories. And all in an attempt to just survive and get through life. You get so good at trying to toughen up hiding your weakness, hiding your fears. You don't want anybody to see any weakness in you because if those who loved you took advantage of those weaknesses, how much more people who don't know you? And because you feel you have no likable qualities, you treat people nicely, you help loads of other people by default, even if this means neglecting yourself. And sadly, this attracts people who take advantage. It brings in the, the abusers, people who hurt you even more until this starts to cause you to develop an imposter, imposter syndrome, which makes it hard to enjoy life, which makes it hard to participate fully at work, to, be, to, to experience your full potential wherever you are. So the goal of tip number two is to help you master spotting those coping addictions that stop you from healing but also bring more pain into your life. Then tip number three is to use compassion, self-compassion and baby steps to help reduce your reliance on those positive coping addictions because that's what's going to stop the pain. That's what's going to help you stop feeling overwhelmed by those memories. I'll explain what that means. You see, as you recognize the positive coping addictions in your life and you start to reduce them, it's going to be painful. It's going to be distressing. It's important to not begin to beat yourself up when that happens. You see, when recovering from drug addiction um, that was used to self-medicate, the common experience would be that all the memories you've blocked away, all the pain you've blocked away, all the nastiness that you've blocked away will begin to come back and you feel it, you, your emotions will become raw. It's going to become hard. In the same way, once you start to rely less on these positive coping addictions, all the pain of the past will come rushing back, will come bombarding you. But this is a good thing. Why would I say it's a good thing? This pain, as nasty as it is, as distressing as it is, it is suggesting that your body is beginning to recover. Let me explain it like this. You see, our brain has a natural process it needs to go through when you've been through trauma. So you have a traumatic experience. Your brain has to process, has to process that experience in order for it to allow you to, to leave it in the past. If your brain doesn't go through that process, your pain, that trauma you, you went through, will keep intruding on your life, will keep hurting you, will keep coming back. So no matter how much you block, no matter how much you, you self-medicate, no matter how much you use any of these positive strategies to force those, ex those painful experiences down, force those memories down, eventually they'll come back up. So when you begin to feel the pain, as you stop relying too much on those coping strategies, this is highlighting that you've begun the process of healthy healing. But to make this process even easier, the best thing to do is to make any changes in baby steps. And doing this will help you push through to the other side of the hump where you can be free from the pain, where the haunting memories no longer have any power over you, where you can be free to live 
your life the way you were meant to. I remember when I was a child, I used to love food. I used to love eating quite a lot. My sisters um, composed this song where they were saying, Who is Mr. Greedy Pig? Wale, Wale. Who is Mr. Greedy Pig? Wale is one. Now, that used to make me really, really angry. Now, I love my sisters to bits, and here's a picture of, of them. I respect them, and they respect me. Uh, we all respect each other. But here's the point. This is the reason why I'm sharing that with you. That song stuck with me. I know they didn't mean harm, and this is just one of those things that uh, we do um, as children. But when I'm in public and we, or we attend a social event and I have to eat something, I often feel very self-conscious. It's much better now, but what will happen would be, I'll be eating and wondering, are people thinking I'm greedy? Is that person looking at my plate? Are they um, thinking I've taken too much food? And this is the reason why I'm saying this. Something as simple as singing that song, Who is Mr. Greed the Pig, um, could create such an impact on me. And even though, yes, it happened over 30 years ago, it's still having an impact on me, regardless of the fact that I'm an adult. If that could affect me that much, how much more being abused, neglected by parents who should love you? How much more would this have an impact on you? So give yourself some rope and the chance to heal. Uh, become a student of self-compassion. Master it and apply it to yourself daily as you learn to reduce reliance on these positive coping addictions. And this will help you get rid of the pain. This will help you get rid of the hurt and empower you to move forward with your life.